So after yesterday's video, we established that the Farah 83 is a sniper complement kind of weapon, but how does it stack up against the best sniper complement inside Warzone at the moment, which is the FF AR1? If you enjoy videos like this, weapon stat breakdowns, weapon comparisons, and overall tips and tricks for Warzone, subscribe to the channel as we're trying to reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers, and on top of that, click the link in the description and follow us over on Twitch. Before we get into the stats, I do need to quickly mention that Raven Software have changed how each attachment works for the Cold War weapons, so we're not going to be using the class setups that you've gotten used to. Now, they have tweeted out earlier today that they will be reverting the changes for the agency suppressor back to normal, which is good to see. But that also means that the best class setup for both of these weapons is bound to change. On the screen here, you'll see the two class setups that we compared for both of these guns, and these are the two class setups that we believe to be the best at the moment for each of their respective guns. We're using the SVOD speed grip and the takedown barrel now along with the steady aim laser. With the FFAR1, you could change the steady aim laser to an optic or anything else, but I chose the takedown barrel because even though the reinforced heavy barrel gives you the best bullet velocity now, the takedown barrel does give you a bit more strafe speed and this would be better for close quarters. Now for the Faraz class setup, we used the ultralight barrel which gives you the best bullet velocity, the field agent grip, and then we swapped out a 3x optic for a mill stop reflex instead because you're going to be using this at close quarters. The iron sights are definitely not the best with this gun so I highly recommend putting on some sort of optic. Just keep in mind these are the best attachments at the time of recording this video. These attachments are likely to change and we've already got confirmation of that agency suppressor change. Now with all of that out of the way let's take a look at the stats. So we have the Farah on the left, the FFAR1 on the right, in white is the base weapon stats, in green is just some highlight areas, and then blue is with the attachments added. Starting from the top here, the headshot damage for the Farah is 49 up close, then it drops down to 37. The body shot damage for the Farah starts at 33 and drops off down to 25. Then for the FFAR1, at close range, the headshot damage is 45, and then it drops off down to 37. And then the body shot damage for the FFAR1 starts at 33 and drops off down to 27. The rate of fire for the Farah we calculated to be 825 rounds per minute. The FFAR1's rate of fire is 900 rounds per minute, so it is faster on the FFAR1, and that is translated into the time to kills as well, because the time to kill for the FFAR1 is about 50 milliseconds less at all ranges. The Farah's damage drop-off point is 22 meters, which is more accurate than yesterday's video, so you will leave a pinned comment on that video. The FFAR1 drops off at 36 meters, so you can see the damage drop off for the FFAR1s better than the Farah as well. The base aim down sight time for the Farah is 300 milliseconds. The base aim down sight time for the FFAR1 is 238 milliseconds. And when you stack attachments on both of these weapons, the FFAR1 still comes out on top. The mag size on the Farah starts at 30. The mag size on the FFAR1 starts at 25. The Farah can go all the way up to 60 rounds, and the FFAR1 can go all the way up to 50 rounds. The reload time on the Farah is 3.17 seconds, which is extremely slow, and adding on those faster mags brings it closer to 2 seconds. The FFAR1's reload time is 2.48 seconds, and then adding on the faster mags brings it to 1.82 seconds. Bullet velocity on both of these guns is very similar for the base weapons, but then when you stack attachments, the Farah does have the faster bullet velocity, but that's because we went with the barrel that has the fastest bullet velocity. If you added on the reinforced heavy for the FFAR1, the bullet velocity would be over 900 meters per second. So even though on screen it does seem like the FFAR1 has lesser bullet velocity than the Farah by a significant amount, we just chose to not have the barrel that has the fastest bullet velocity on the far. Like what I mentioned before, the takedown barrel actually gives you strafe speed as well, and this is really good for close quarters engagements. Plus, there's no cons with the takedown barrel. So as we can see, the FFAR1 is definitely doing better than the Farah here. It has the faster time to kill, the damage drop-off point is further for the base weapons. If you do stack certain barrel attachments on both of these guns, you can extend the range out. I just think bullet velocity is more important here, but then reload times and overall handling times are also better on the FFAR1 as well. Another thing we need to consider here is obviously the recoil patterns. If you can hit more shots with the Farah than the FFAR1, then the Farah might be a really good option here. And again, you might be extremely disappointed. On the screen now, you will see the recoil chart for both the base FFAR1, which is on the left in green, and the Farah, which is in blue. All recoil charts were taken at a 12 meter distance. 
And now from what you can see on screen, it's kind of difficult to determine which one of these two guns has the better recoil chart. The FFAR1 does seem like it goes straight upwards and it does have a slight S-shaped curve, but it has a lot of horizontal recoil, whereas the Farah doesn't have a lot of horizontal recoil, but it does curve all the way to the right and then back to the left again. Personally, if I had to choose one, I would still stick with the FFAR1 because the shots are still so central, you'll still probably land more shots with that gun than you would with the Farah. But let's take a look at what the attachments added. So after stacking all of the attachments on these guns, you can see the Farah still goes all the way to the right and then back to the left again very harshly in that S shape. Whereas the FFAR1 is pretty much a vertical recoil pattern, which as we all know, this is very easy to manage. As you can see, the magnitude of the recoil of the FFAR1 is pretty high, and that's what makes it a little bit harder to control, but it's still much easier than the Farah. At this point, you're going to be thinking, I'll stick with my FFAR1 and run away and change the class setup to what I've just shown you, and to be fair, you'd probably be right in doing that. In its current state, it's almost no reason to be using the Farah at the moment. It's not good at close range, it's not good at long range, it's not good at any kind of range. Now that's not to say it's an extremely bad gun, it still kills reasonably quickly and you still can land shots with it, but the problem is that there's going to be a gun that always outperforms it at every single distance you try and shoot at. At long range you'll get outgunned by a Grau or an Amex, at close range you'll always get outgunned by the FFAR or even some of the SMGs in the game. The last thing we need to consider is hit fire accuracy. Now a lot of things are not going right for this gun so maybe this will. And no. As you can see, the hit fire chart for both of the guns are on screen just now. Neither of these are great, in my opinion, but the FFAR1 is slightly better, in my opinion, because it doesn't spray very vertically, it's very central compared to the Farah. Hit fire shouldn't be the main reason you pick either one of these two guns, but if you had to pick one based off a of hit fire accuracy, the far, in my opinion, is better. But keep in mind, we did add that steady aim laser in there to help out with the hip fire accuracy. Now, like I said, you can swap out that attachment for something else if you wanted to, because it's not really helping the hip fire all that much. The reason I added it in is because it doesn't give you very many cons, and any benefit to hip fire accuracy will do the FFAR1 justice because it is a close range weapon. Now, you could change it out for some of the muzzles, like the infantry compensator, all that kind of stuff, but I find it quite easy to manage the recoil of the FFAR1. Uh, with the other attachments that are already on the gun. So when it comes down to picking one of these two guns, it's quite obvious that you should be choosing the FFAR1 over the Farah. The FFAR1 is already the best close range weapon in all of Warzone, so that was already tough to compete with. And like I said, the FFAR1 doesn't really perform very well at all distances, so it's going to be a tough choice over a lot of the other weapons in the game. But let me know what you think about both of these guns down in the comments below. Have you tried out the Farah? Have you tried out this new build for the FFAR1? Also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe as we're trying to reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers. Click the link in the description to follow us over on Twitch. We will be live streaming tomorrow. And thank you very much for watching.